You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present The Long Drive by John Fryer with Robin Ingram, Jeff Bainham and Vanda Dushinska as Magda. From the very beginning, it felt like a setup. I understand, but you went along with it anyway. Well, what else could I do? My job, after all. Word came in, and I went. As I said, I do understand. If you can't follow the chain of command, what's the point of joining the team? Well, that's the way I felt about it. More important than signing a piece of paper, you say yes, in essence, you give them your word. And there is nothing more important than that. Exactly. You never thought... It might have been a trap. I mean, a different kind of trap. A trap from our side? I thought about it. I thought about it quite a lot, actually. If I'm truthful with you, Mike, part of me just assumed that it was. You you know what it's like. You get ready, you meet your contact, but you never know, never really know, is this for real? You never know if it's genuine, if you... You hope you never know. A setup, like I said. If it was, I rationalized, I wouldn't be the first. Meet so and so, they say. Listen to what they have to say, if indeed they have anything to say. Make only the comments that you need to, arrange another meeting. The usual stuff. We've both done it before. I suppose there is always an air of excitement. Will this lead to something? Is it a dead end? Will this turn the game on its head? That a bit romantic? I still like to think of us as the good guys. Or is that just me? I think we all know a bit more than that these days. Good depends on one's viewpoint, you mean. Doesn't it always? <laughs> Didn't it ever? I take your point. Believe in the cause, if you can, Ted. Just don't make it your religion, that's all. Never was for you. For me? People don't end up in our line of work for riches or fame. Why not? Heads of the service have written books, given interviews. They don't all stay in the shadows anymore. I think there are people in this profession that are just desperate to tell the world all the secrets they think they know. Especially if they think that there is some money in it. But of course. The world runs on gossip. (laughs) If you think I'm wrong, close your eyes next time you're in a cafe or a pub. Everyone loves the idea of knowing more than their neighbor. Everyone wants to think that they are more than they really are. It's human nature. The search for meaning. I've heard it put like that in the past. Do we matter? Do we count? Will anyone notice our passing? Oh, that sort of thing. And the answer? Uh, Most of us will be forgotten very quickly. Our passing unnoticed. Sobering. You disagree? No, probably not. The world did not stop turning when we came into it and will not stop when we leave. Must be... What you do while in it, that matters. Yes. Traffic really thins out this far north. Mm, The M6 goes a long way. When we get there... There'll be a lot of questions, I'm sure. Yes, I thought something like that might be the case. Well, they would like to know, hear what's going on, your version of events, if you like. After all, you're here and I'm not. As far as London is concerned, I'm on holiday. I've nothing to do with this. I'm only here to watch your bag. Of course. Mm. The meeting in Nottingham left a lot of unanswered questions, if I understand you correctly. You do. Too much confusion, too much suspicion, too many ears at keyholes. Nature of the beast. From what you've told me, I can see why some might think we were being given the runaround. Never an easy call. How far can you trust your enemy? It's only reasonable for others to ask questions. I mean, you can see their point of view. Yes, yes, I suppose you're right. I suppose others might have a more critical standpoint. (laughs) You concede the point. If I was in their shoes, then yes, as I would. It's nothing personal. Never is. You said you thought it was a setup. Why? Oh, you know how it is. How? What? Well, a meeting is arranged. Something feels wrong. Wrong? 
In what way? Now, the idea was to meet my contact in Poland. This, this was not the first time, by the way. Contact had already been established several years previously, and a succession of meetings had taken place. Normally, these arrangements would occur on the back of trade talks, treaty changes, even once under the umbrella of cultural exchange. I don't know why they still do those. Anyway, this one was to be in Poland itself. The reason, at least the reason I was told, was that this was a meeting outside of the usual timetable. That should have got me thinking, now that I recall it. Why do you say that? The usual contact was off. Off? As on gardening leave or off sick? <laughs> Holiday. Holiday? That's what they said to me. Mm, and you believed them? I was told it came from the top. If it comes from the top, it comes from the top. I'm a foot soldier. I do as I'm told. They say, come here, go there, and I jump to it. It didn't strike you as odd? It all struck me as odd, but I thought they had their reasons, whether they chose to tell the likes of me or not. That was their decision. I was just the one that would actually have to do it. Very loyal of you. You think so? Don't you? I'm a company man. I, After a certain length of time, well, I guess we all are. Once you realize that there is nowhere else to go, they... Is that a form of loyalty? Maybe it is. Maybe it's just the realization that there's no longer anyone else that will give me a job. Our skills, if that is the word, are not exactly transferable, are they? No, I would agree with you. So, this meeting in Poland, what were you told? Well, the contacts apparently knew it would be someone different, not the usual, and was, again, apparently unfazed by this. You know how these things work, the same faces, building trust, getting to know the individual, looking after them, becoming almost like a father figure, providing for them if necessary. The fact that I was told none of that mattered on this occasion did make me suspicious. Did you raise any concerns about this? I might have said something about it being unusual, but no one appeared concerned, at least at the time. It was to be a standard meeting. Nothing out of the ordinary? Were you to take anything? You mean like a secret roll of microfilm? <laughs> we both know that we've moved on from those days. I was only told to listen. Praise the situation, report back. Go on. Well, I flew to Warsaw, from there to a field outside of Eggblack. You know it. The Amber Trail to the Baltic Sea. You do know it. I read that somewhere a long time ago. I hired a car and drove to the arranged point. Any problems? No, I didn't see anyone following. That's what you're hinting at. Of course, I can't see anyone following us now, which doesn't mean that via satellite they're not. It just means that uh, I can't see them. You thought the vehicle might have been bugged? Ah, possibly, but I didn't really believe so. No one could have known which car hire I would use, let alone which motor I might pick. Of course, if they were already watching me, the choice of wheels would be irrelevant, wouldn't they? And if they were watching me, they wouldn't advertise the fact, would they? I agree. Which would suggest that they were watching. Again, I would agree. That would suggest that they knew you were coming over. And possibly even why. You like the countryside. I'm more of a city bloke myself. I love the outdoor life. One day I shall retire to the country. Well, it certainly looks very nice. It does. I'm Magda. What's your name? Peter. You say that a little too quickly. People are often embarrassed by their own name. You need to pause a little before you say it, for it to sound plausible. Thank you. I'll try and remember that. So, what's your name? Your real name? Peter. That's better. That, I can believe. Thank you. Is this safe? Safe? But well, we're outside. You think we are being overheard? There are satellites. Uh... And your country listens to the world, does it not? I wouldn't know what you mean. Your communications headquarters are even in the newspapers these days. PCHQ is rightly famous, if that's what you're alluding to. And do we not all watch each other? And when there is no one else to watch, we watch our own shadows. I wouldn't know. 
We all have costs that must be met. That's one way of putting it. Whatever keeps the budgets intact. You said you wanted to meet. Or to meet someone different. Vauxhall was intrigued. I don't trust Vauxhall. Oh? How many people work there? I don't know. I've never counted them. Thousands, I would think. Foreign and domestic. On either side of the Thames. GCHQ in Cheltenham. How many others are there? You are asking me? Echelon is in Yorkshire. The CIA in your own backyard. Well, they are our friends. Are we not your friends as well? Who said you weren't? You play games with enemies your people don't see. You and your friends play games with enemies you believe will not hurt you directly. You're getting a bit cryptic. We are not separated by water as you are. Moscow will need no ships to return to us. Borders are only lines drawn on a piece of paper. Why did you not want your usual contact? I told you, I don't trust the usual man. Usual man? He said his name was David. Perhaps it is. Like yours is Peter. And yours is Mac. People's movements can be so easily traced these days. Anyone with a mobile phone may be listened to, wherever they are. When you met your contact, did you have your phone with you? I prefer not to carry one. And your contact? I don't know. I never asked him. You didn't ask? How would I have known if he was telling me the truth or not? You could have asked. I could have. I decided not to. Trust is the currency of our profession, don't you think? Ours has been called the second oldest profession. <laughs> and indeed it is. Are we not all whores, selling ourselves for one belief or another? And if not for one ideology, then certainly for money. Money comes and goes. Oh, then you are a believer. A romantic, maybe. Well, the days of fighting for a better world tomorrow appear to be over. Are they? You think people still look to build a fairer society for all? Not what I see. Then what do you see? I see a world of seven billion individuals, all pulling in separate directions. And what direction are you going in? I'm just trying to pay the mortgage. I like the British. So many of your countrymen and women do. And how many of the British are in Europe? About two million, I believe. It's not a one-way flow of people. Why do you not trust David? Do you know him? By reputation only. Then you will know what he is like. I hear only good things. Do you? What, does he fail to keep appointments? Is he unreliable? Unprofessional? <laughs> Would you say he's been inconsistent? No. He has been none of these things. Then what is the problem? You know, there is little clandestine about our meetings. We are all allies now. We can, ought to be open with each other. We need no longer keep secrets. Is that not correct? The age of openness has arrived. I read it in the newspapers. Or was it on the internet? I forget. Don't you believe that a better time has come? Or that it's only the old times, but presented in a different way? Can you not say? Not sure I'm qualified to comment. We are all qualified. Are we not all alive at this time? Could we please get back to the point in question? Why did you no longer want to see David? You say you know him. I uh, said I knew him only by reputation. As far as I know, he's a good man. As far as you know. I think you know him better than you say. Yes. 